How do you get backlinks for your Shopify store? In this video, I'm going to go through how to read your backlinks inside of Google Search Console, how you can find competitor backlinks to rank better, and does backlinking actually matter? I do a brief case study and show you how a website is doing awesome without hardly any backlinks and why my competitors are beating me because they don't have any backlinks on some of their top performing pages. And finally, I'm gonna recommend my top three tips and recommend 17 more for you to check out to understand how you can apply this to your Shopify store and see the results. We've done this thousands of times for different clients, but we've given up on building backlinks because it's not worth it. It is speculative marketing and it's better to spend that money that can go into building backlinks into making good content and even better, spending it on ads. If you wanna see quick results, backlinks, eh, they'll do it. And it's just going to really take a lot of time and effort. So if you have a lot of drive and you have no budget, backlinking is a great strategy. But once you start getting a budget and you start getting less time, backlinking ROI starts to go down and plummet because you have more things to do as a business owner than trying to solicit backlinks from crappy websites that may or may not improve your SEO results. So let's go through and find out how you can study your backlinks and how to find an opportunity to rank your site higher on Google without breaking your back. So let's go in. What most people think is backlink building are actually link schemes. Google clearly defines this in its search guidelines and what a linking scheme is. The most common ones that you'll see is buying and selling links to pass authority onto your website. Also offering some sort of promotions or sending somebody a free product in exchange for a link. A lot of people do this because they think it gives them results, but it's really hard to measure and it's speculative marketing. Another common one is exchanging links. You link to me, I link back to you. Very simple. A lot of people do this, but Google can generally figure this out based off of the performance and what you're doing. A lot of people try to hide this and cloak it, but this is you against a machine. This is why people pay SEOs a lot of money to do this, but actually it's going to be a waste of time because you can use that money on building better quality content and better strategies that will naturally get you that exposure you need. And you also have to broaden your understanding of what a backlink is is so make sure you're not doing any of these linking schemes and avoid them at all costs a real common one is using software to generate poor quality links and the only thing you're going to do is screw up your seo and you're going to rank lower google's figured this out google knows which sites are buying links because they're linking out to sites that have nothing to do with their industries and it's very clear so stay away from these crappy and shady linking techniques so now I'm gonna look at this dog site. It's actually a travel blog for pets and it's a really cool client. They're doing really well right now in terms of their analytics, but inside of Google Search Console, you can drill down into the links folder. Inside of here, there's a couple of things. You're gonna see external links. This is people linking to your site, internal links. This is you linking throughout your website and the different content. This is actually very important for SEO because it improves the user experience. So make sure you're linking in between your content and then a breakdown of which websites are linking to you. And then finally the text that is being put into the anchor text that brings people into your website. And these are very important because these texts are also keywords that Google is gonna consider and rank your site for. So I'll give you a pretty good example in this. So when you look at this breakdown, you can see that this page is getting tons of links and it's coming from about 81 domains, right? So let's just clear this up. You can see there's a ton of domains here. But when I go back here and actually look at the results, this keyword right here is generating the results right here, this fluffy Frenchie. So when I look at this page, the fluffy Frenchie page is generating the most clicks. It's generating over 80% of the results on the website. So it must have the most links, right? So let me go in here into the link folder and let's find that link. It's not in the top 25. Let's see if it's in the top 50. There it is. It's in the top 50 and it only has five linking domains and six backlinks, but it's not the most linked to page and it's getting 80% of the results. Why is that? Well, it has to have a great backlink, right? 
Well, looking at the backlinks here, I can go through all of these domains and I can drill down and see the pins that are giving me results. Social media is a great driver for results. Social platforms are search engines if you think about it. There's a bunch of people searching for stuff all the time. So I can go in here and test these links. So I'm, I've tested these links already, but I'll just test this one. I'll copy it. I'm in Ahrefs. I'll go ahead and drop that link in here. Wow hardly a domain authority, and it's top 70 million on Ahrefs. I checked out a couple of these sites and they aren't producing results. So what gives? Why is this site having such great results for this web page, but it doesn't have great backlinks? Well, when you take a look at the article, it's pretty dense. There's lots of images, there's lots of text, and it's actually really, really thorough. And look at the engagement. There's comments on here. It's actually getting engagement. So the same rules apply as on social media. If you create great content with images and text, and there's engagement, it's going to generate results. So let's go a little deeper. We're on this page, and I'm gonna check the links on it in Ahrefs. So Google Search Console is going to be your primary source to review your SEO data, but there's a lot of tools you can use and there's no right or wrong tool besides Search Console. It should be your number one tool, but I can go in here and actually check the backlinks in Ahrefs. A lot of tools do this and it's pretty cool, but you can see the authority on this site isn't that huge and this particular page only has one backlink. Google is showing me more data, but I can see that I'm getting something from this dog site and it's ranking 100 million. So still, that doesn't make any sense. It has to mean that I'm doing something wrong or I'm doing something right. I can't really figure it out. Now, I'll show you a technique in finding your competitor backlinks because what I'll show you later is how content can perform and give you great results without any backlinks. That's one of the keys about SEO. But let's look at this keyword study first. So when I go back into Search Console, I'm gonna to try to narrow down the results. In a previous video, I showed you how you can get all these keywords and rankings inside of Ahrefs and do reporting, but when I drill into this page, it's producing a lot of results. So let's try to find the number one keyword that's producing almost all the results for this web page. I'm gonna go into the Keyword Explorer and just drop this in and check it out. Its difficulty is gonna be one out of 100. This is a ding, ding, ding opportunity because it will give you a new keyword to rank for and no one's going after it. Look how much search volume it has, 250. I'm probably ranking for the top three of this keyword already and I'm getting a high click-through rate. So when I go a little bit deeper, it's going to give me more suggestions I can use in my optimization. But when you go deeper, it's going to show you the pages right down in here. You can actually export them and start tracking them. But I wanna just look at a brief break down. These domains you can see that this Facebook page is dominating. I'm getting some images and I'm also getting some frequently asked questions. So it's pretty easy because look, Pinterest, Pinterest, Pinterest pins are dominating here. I see another travel and I'm way down here at the bottom in the top 10. And if my domain authority goes up a little bit higher, I'm going to rank higher. But that's not always true. You can see this site's ranking 83 million and it's in the top four. The authority of your site doesn't always matter if the content is good. So you can go over here and actually check them out and see what they're doing. And you can see this site has some content and it isn't that great of a website. This is indicating to me you can take them out by having a better website and better content and being more aggressive at your communication. I can analyze all these sites and take a look at what links they're actually getting. Look, this site that's number four doesn't have a backlink. I'm getting some backlinks here, some backlinks here, but the top sites, not all of them have backlinks. Isn't that bizarre? So why would you want to get backlinks if you don't really need them to rank? So let's just go over into this famous Frenchies Australia, right? So this site's doing pretty good. It looks a little bit better and it's a bit more thorough and it has a lot more information. Just look how deep this information is. There's a lot of SEO opportunities here from a technical side that I can see right now that I won't call out, but you can see why content is important. So, all right. What's Famous Frenchies doing in terms of backlinks? Let's check out their backlink profile. In Ahrefs, you can actually go in and drill into it. And I can see I'm getting something from a French Bulldog 101, domain rank one, custom crafted keywords, 16 domain rank, not really much different than the backlink profile that I have on this page. If you do enough analysis, 
you'll probably come to the conclusion that the dog niche in this case for French Bulldogs doesn't have a lot of competition. You should start a drop shipping store on this. It could probably yield some great results because nobody's going after it and doing a really good job. So becoming an expert at your content is really important, but also you don't really need that many backlinks to get going. And this is where I'm going to show you how to find out uh, which backlinking strategy makes sense for your site. All right, so I'm gonna drop a link to this article. I'm going to give you 17 tactics you can use to build backlink building, but I'm going to shout out my top three. So let's go through the top three that you can do with little experience and actually get the same kind of results as the French Bulldog. That Bulldog is killing it on Google and it's a dog. You should be able to handle it all on your own after watching this video. So let me just dive in into my top three tips. The most successful link building strategies we have employed is an oldie but a goodie. We try to produce really high quality pieces of content and then put them in front of audiences from which the content would be highly relevant. When the content is not relevant or is only mildly relevant to the publisher, we see a much lower success rate. This can be boiled down to simply trying to be featured in as many outlets as possible. Try services like Haro, Source Bottle, Muckrack, and Link Prospector can make the whole thing much easier. Social outreach is basically a guest post on steroids. That's because with link building, you simply focus on the number of high quality, unique links you can get. If at the same time you wanna get a lot of traffic, then guest posting will probably work better. Through engaging with journalists and writing my quotes for them, I acquire a ton of high quality DA, DR links that have helped us rank higher over time. And honestly, that seems to be the best source of top-notch links. First, look for leading companies and experts of your respected fields and their official websites, which are usually high domain authority sites. Then try to contact the expert or the CEO of the company and request them for an interview over a topic of your field, which you will publish as a blog post on your platform. Many of them will accept your request as it allows them to get more exposure. Thank you for watching this Shopify marketing course. Every day we're launching new Shopify marketing content to put you in the driver's seat of your business so you can have full control of your marketing and advertising. Hit subscribe, hit notifications, and tune into the next video that's starting now.